back to my channel. If you're new here, hello. My name is Kay, I'm a professional home organizer and soprano here in the Boston area, and I'm here to inspire you to live a more organized life. So if you're like, wow, you look the same as you did in the last video, I do because it's the same day. I'm shooting two videos on the same day. So today we're gonna do the fridge. Now, I've gotten a couple of requests because of my organizing trends video that you guys want to know how to organize your fridge using a food science. And we're gonna do that today because our fridge, ooh, our fridge, our fridge. So for the first time in a long time, we don't have a French door fridge. We have a regular fridge with a freezer on top and the fridge on the bottom. This is very different than what we've been dealing with before. So we're just gonna be concerning our fridge action. So look at the mess that our fridge is right now. Actually, it's not that bad. It was worse this morning, but um, it, right now it's not optimized for the best food storage. So we're gonna do that today. Maybe throw away, I don't know if that zucchini is good or not, but maybe we'll cook it tonight <laughs> if it's like on its last legs. But we're gonna organize our fridge. And as you can see, we don't have the clear um, door stuff anymore, so I can't really see what's down in there. So I'm gonna see if I can maybe do something about that probably can't but um we're gonna organize this anyway so let's do it if you're intimidated by trying to organize your refrigerator don't be it, it i feel like it never takes as long as you think it's going to take um because i was thinking oh this is going to take forever and it, it really didn't it really just involved me moving around some items especially the condiments because they were all mixed up because what happened is when the food came from our condo i really just unpacked it out of the cooler and just kind of left it but now I've organized it in a way that where I can find items I've grouped all the liked items like like items together all of the pickles pickled things olives are together all the sauces all the hot sauces all the condiments are together and I prepared some of my celery uh, to go in a container so that it's ready to go for snacks uh, because I often find that I use celery more if it's already cut up and ready to go so that's something I took the time to do and I was happy that I did that and it just it didn't take me that long of course I dropped the entire container of strawberries uh, during this but uh, I cleaned them Okay, I'm done. You know what? That wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be, and I am glad we can find everything now. I only needed a couple of containers, and uh, we are good to go. So I'll show you how I organized my fridge, and we'll talk about fridge organization using food science right now. Well, this dishwasher is very hot. It's on the dry cycle right now, and I'm like, whoa, updraft. Okay, I'm all done organizing. Let's take a look. <gasps> Yay, it looks so much better than it used to. This morning it was even worse. I wish I had captured it this morning, but um, before we talk about anything else, let's talk about these crisper drawers. I got a lot of questions about these crisper drawers. Fruits, vegetables, vent open, vent closed, humidity, no humidity. What does it all mean, right? <laughs> okay, so generally, let's talk a little bit about plants. Plants have leaves and a lot of leafy green vegetables. And if you have house plants, you know this, need some humidity to actually do pretty well. And vegetables like, uh, this is a uh, cabbage, kale, lettuce, those kinds of vegetables really benefit from having a humid environment. So that way you want the vent actually closed. Um, then there's another kind of vegetable that likes to be in here as well, and that is the ethylene sensitive vegetable. Let me close this while I talk about this really quickly. Ethylene is a plant hormone, and it tells plants to ripen and uh, brown and things like that. So um, the one of the biggest like producers of ethylene is actually apples, avocados, bananas. Those are super, like they're shooting out a lot of ethylene, right? And ethylene is what causes your vegetables and fruits to actually go bad faster because they're telling uh, plants to ripen. So if you put your lettuce next to your apples, for example, the apples are shooting off all this ethylene and the lettuce is absorbing it because it's ethylene sensitive. Your lettuce starts to go, yeah. That's the same for like cucumbers, uh, carrots, I think are on that list. I do have a generated list that I made like years ago and I actually have to print it, put it somewhere where it's convenient, probably like inside one of these cabinets uh, for the new place. But it is the ethylene sensitivity chart and I will link it down below for your convenience. You can print it out, it's totally free. You just have to get it off my website. 
Um, and so all the ethylene sensitive vegetables and the leafy green vegetables should go together in one of those drawers and all the and all the ethylene producing vegetables and fruits and those who don't mind can go in the other one and fruits like peppers and uh, like lemons and limes, citrus fruits, they're not really affected by ethylene. They don't really ripen after they're picked. Um, and this really affects fruits and vegetables that actually ripen after you pick them. Um, but like peppers, they don't really continue to ripen after they've been picked and neither do limes and lemons either. So they can go in with the apples and and avocados and, and be okay. So also you wanna keep your vent closed on the leafy green eth ethylene sensitive side and you want to keep your vent open on the ethylene producing side because those don't need the humidity actually it might hinder some of your freshness in here so in this one I have actually divided this one because I, I just like to do that I'm like kind of weird like that I like the lemons and limes to be in their own little house I have a lemon and lime house yes we're kind of weird and then my husband like eats a bunch of oranges and we have one apple um, we normally have a bunch of bell peppers but there were a couple of them were going bad last night so I just had to like cook them um, but normally we have bell peppers and those can go in there as well um, we do eat a lot of produce so the challenge is storing all this produce so I do have these um, OXO green savers and they're great for storing produce I got some mushrooms in here actually and they're getting a lot of ventilation um, so those I'm gonna cook those in the next couple of days anyway got some fruit back there we got our eggs back there in our egg containers the only reason we have egg containers that are aside from the store containers is because we can stack things on top of the egg containers and we do we do we go through a lot of eggs we eat eggs actually um, for breakfast lunch and dinner sometimes so we just go through a lot of eggs that is there and we have some vegetables that we eat first I mean sorry fruits that we have for snacks back there and some radishes that are left over from a meal probably throw these in a salad um, but this is a stasher bag it's made from silicone and it's a great alternative to um, one-time use plastic bags so I highly recommend these I will tell you that they are incredibly expensive um, so just buy one at a time maybe buy a, you know a set from stasher when they're on sale but they're worth it because you can pop them in the dishwasher um, and use them you know a lot a lot more times than just once um, I've had these for years and love them but they are very pricey we've got some bok choy in there I'm gonna have to make some like fried rice or something like that in the next couple of days but um, I've got my herbs here and herbs are another thing that really like a lot of humidity so what I do is I throw a bag on top and some water in the bottom so there's some spring onions in there as well um, just to keep the humidity levels up so that these don't spoil as quickly and that's the key leafy green vegetables they love humidity just like your house plants so let them have it um, we got two things of kale here <laughs> we're, we're, we need these for recipes but we love to eat kale um, we've prepared our celery for snacks because I'm gonna make some hummus uh, in the next couple of days got an extra head of cauliflower here. no this is half a head of cauliflower there but we're, we need to grin cook this in the next few days <laughs> and some lettuce my husband is like a big lettuce fiend I made some pico de gallo a couple of days ago and some chili so that's left over We're probably gonna have that this evening for dinner um, and just some dairy drinks now dairy um, needs to be in the coldest part of your fridge just like your eggs which the coldest part of your fridge tends to be the back of the fridge and the bottom area of the fridge um, the side door of the fridge you're opening and closing the door a lot so this area is going to vary a lot in temperature and I got some questions about what is appropriate to store in the door of the fridge and my answer is condiments and beverages and other things that can withstand the temperature variation of you opening and closing the door because at some point this will be like 40 degrees when really you want an ideal uh, temperature of like 38 or 37 I think 38 to 30 to 30 let's see 38 to 40 um, Fahrenheit is ideal in the fridge if not I will pop it on the screen editing K here the ideal fridge temperature is below 40 degrees and the door tends to be 42 44 ish depending on how often you open and close it so below 40 is where you want to be in your fridge Fahrenheit um, but if you're not sure you can buy and I need to close the fridge because it's getting warm in the fridge you can buy a little fridge thermometer if you want um, they're really cheap and you can just pop them in one area of the fridge close the door wait a few hours and then see which area of your fridge is the is the coldest and then like 
organize based on that. The things that spoil the fastest, you want them towards the coldest part of your fridge. So in turn, dairy in the back, but condiments and things with vinegar and salt, like pickles, olives, and like, you know, beer, <laughs> um, ketchup, things that can tolerate being a little warmer go in the door. And as you can see, we have lots of hot sauce and cooking sauces and uh, like uh, tahini, ketchup, lemon juice. We just, we cook a lot. So we have a lot of these little fun condiments and we go through them fast. <laughs> so, but we have uh, a good variety here and we are, we are hot sauce addicts. Like we love it. We love hot sauce. If any of you guys know a really good hot sauce that we should try, let me know down in the comments because right now we're using, um, we got some, Berries is a local brand actually, uh, but my husband got some of that like hot ones, hot sauce, and that's like really extreme. But if you guys know any like yummy, yummy hot sauces we should try, let me know. We're, we're down for that. Anyway, also we have our filtered water in here because we don't have filtered water in this in this house. We also have our deli drawer. Now our deli drawer is a lot smaller than when in our last place, but it's where we keep our cheeses and, um, uh, Plant, plant proteins and animal proteins when we have them. Um, we also have a little drawer down in here as well. <laughs> it's a little like makeshift drawer that is is basically a fridge uh, container with a little handle. It's very cute. It's from Container Store. I will link it down below. They, they sell different sizes of these and I found this pretty handy. I hadn't used this for a couple of years and I dragged it out and I was like, oh, this is handy. So we've got a little bacon and leftover cheese. And is that cheese on a piece of bread? Oh my goodness. The husbando. We got some cheddar cheese and other cheeses back there. We love cheese. This family loves cheese, you guys. We love cheese. Anyway, I'm gonna close the fridge because it's warming up in here. But here is our organized fridge tour. And we love, actually, we love having the freezer like that. And um, I'll show you the freezer real quick. We haven't organized it. We just got the stuff from our freezer. Um, maybe like last week because <laughs> we had stuff in our condo freezer forever. Look, my, it was my husband's birthday, but my husband's birthday and he still has his like, his, <laughs> his cake in there, his ice cream cake. But we haven't um, organized this yet and I'm dying to get in here. Oh, I also have some candles that I'm trying to separate from their containers in here so I can recycle the, uh, the container. Ooh, and some bananas. Oh my gosh. Clover has ice cream in here too. It's, 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 it's we need to work on this, but um, I am very happy for a change, not to have the drawer freezer because I hate it, I hate it. Okay, quick and dirty fridge organization. I hope it inspires you. I will link all the products I talked about down below in the description as well as the uh, produce storage guide that has been really handy in the past few years. Um, I always tack it next to the fridge so that when I'm unpacking my groceries, I can be like, what goes with what? Am I gonna spoil this fast? I don't know. So, cause I can't remember. And, no one, I mean, no one can remember. Well, I may can remember like kale and like let us go together, but like nothing else, <laughs> right? I hope you guys are having a great morning, great afternoon, great evening, wherever you are. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.